Hey coffee folks, today I've got another specialty coffee review and this one is from Extracto in Portland, Oregon. And the reason I was reading this book right here, Left Coast Roast, really good coffee book and one of the first that I owned. It has a whole bunch of coffee roaster recommendations in it and my fiance was in Portland and asked me for some recommendations on what to check out and I think she was just trying to pick me up a gift because she picked me up this bag from Extracto and anyway I came across Extracto here in this book I, I really have only been to Portland once believe it or not and haven't been to any of their coffee shops or any local roasters there so we took a leap of faith based on the recommendation from this book and she brought me back this single origin from a single farm and it's called if you didn't see before Ethiopia Hambella and there really wasn't a lot of information about this coffee on their website but I was able to dig up little bio on multiple sites, one of them being royalnewyork.com. So I'll just read you a little bit about what Ethiopia Hambella is. I, so the coffee is sourced from Metad, so M-E-T-A-D, Agricultural Development, and is a family-owned business that operates the Hambella Coffee Estate. So that's where I take it. This is from the Hambella Coffee Estate. And Metad has a rich history that began after World War II when the Ethiopian emperor awarded Lembet Emiru, the first African female pilot and family matriarch with land in the Harar and Sidama regions that has become the Hambella coffee estate. So Metad tries to stri strives to strengthen the local community with employment opportunities such as a workforce that is 70% women and educational opportunities including sponsorship for a state-of-the-art elementary school with more than 300 students in healthcare for employees and medical support featuring a partnership with Grounds for Health to implement cervical cancer screening for women in the community. Mitad provides technical assistance and shares modern farming equipment with other local farmers and Mitad also has the first and only private state-of-the-art SCAA certified quality control lab in Africa used to train both domestic and international co coffee professionals. So I'm sorry for reading that whole thing. Um, if you weren't interested in that, I hope you skipped ahead, but I think it's kind of nice to know about where the coffee actually comes from before it's roasted. And this coffee was grown, I believe it, it says here on this website, and I don't know if it's the same thing for this particular one, but I imagine it is because it's coming from the same estate, but it's grown at about 1900 to 2200 meters above sea, lo sea level, and it's uh, the indigenous heirloom varietal, naturally processed and sun-dried on raised beds. So that is Hambella, the estate that this coffee comes from, and this is the coffee itself. And I believe it's roasted on, according to this book, I think they use just a, a drum roaster. So 22 kilo Probat drum roaster. So they didn't begin roasting, they being Extracto until 2008. And they used to serve other people's coffee, but there's a look. So this is maybe barely city to me definitely a light roast. Maybe some of them are on the verge of cinnamon. It's not particularly even all the time, but I don't think that that was really a problem. The smell is kind of a, an earthy blueberry, uh, the aroma that is. And once the coffee is brewed, I would say more floral notes come out. So let's talk a little bit about the coffee itself. I just brewed up a cup with the V60 and I'm almost through the whole bag. Um, I didn't show you into my airscape here, but 
I have probably about 60 grams left and I, I actually had a really difficult time with this one I'll be honest my fiance raved about this coffee she said that it was one of the best cups she's ever had super fruity and I tried to replicate it for her I obviously don't know what she tasted back when she had it at Extracto in Portland but I tried to replicate it and she said I came close sometimes but I was still way off the mark and I, I think I just kept over extracting it uh, I would try and coarsen things up and I would still have brew times that were getting over four minutes sometimes and I think maybe I was using water temperatures that were too high here and there but I think eventually I, I honed in on something that worked for me and the best cup I probably brewed was with the AeroPress this morning. I used a pretty fine grind somewhere that's close to espresso but between drip and espresso and I used the inverted method with water that was only at about 202 degrees Fahrenheit. So the total brew time was about 145 and that ended up being a really good cup of coffee. So I put 18 grams of coffee into the AeroPress and I used about 222 grams of water. So in case you want to try and replicate it, if you pick up a bag of this, that's the best thing I got. Um, as far as the flavor goes, it's... Um, there are those those blue blueberry undertones in it, but I'd say for the most part, it's it's kind of a strong cranberry, uh, a little bit of a dry mouthfeel, but syrupy up front. So in terms of body, it's it's on the lighter side. It's not, well. It's actually a pretty thick body considering it's it's a lighter roast, if that makes sense. But um, I have found that it, it has kind of a drier mouthfeel to it, at least in the majority of cups that I brewed. I also pull a lot of shots with this, but unfortunately I didn't have too much success. I think my grinder was really letting me down. Um, the Breville Smart Grinder Pro that means and I think it's about time that I move on from it because it keeps locking up and I can't get fine enough for a lighter roast like this but when I was able to pull shots that were kind of in the right time range it ended up being like a really really bright shot and almost a little bit too sour and it could have just been that well I mean there's a whole bunch of things it could have been but my guess is that I was just maybe still not fine enough with the grind I think I was still pulling the shots a little bit too quickly um, it could have also been that my water temperature was maybe a little bit too low but for what it is as a single origin coffee from the Ethiopian region I would say that it's it's an above average Ethiopian, but it, it definitely isn't my favorite from the last, uh, I don't know, half year. I've had better ones, and that's not a knock on this at all. I, I think, to be honest, that maybe I'm just not ju doing it justice, especially because Veronica said it was so great, and she's kind of a tough critic, tougher than I am at least. Uh, I think my main frustration with this is that I I didn't find it to be very forgiving. And so for people that say want to get into more manual brew methods and try and get the best out of their coffee, this isn't an easy one to start on. So this is for professionals only, I would say. Um, but I think that these guys are really cool. I emailed Chris, one of the owners, and um, I was just trying to look for some ideas on how to brew this under the, the right conditions, try and replicate what Veronica had, and he gave me some feedback. And I did improve things a little bit from there, so that was really cool of them. So I know that's a really long-winded review, but I think that this is a good one if you're 
an advanced coffee brewer. It's definitely an Ethiopian that I would check out because I think that it does have a lot of potential, but unfortunately um, for those beginners, which I still consider myself to be, it's going to be a little bit harder. So that is Extracto Coffee's Ethio Ethiopia Hambella, and you can get it right from their website, I think. Or if you're in Portland, you should definitely check out this shop because I hear it's great. So thanks for watching, and if you like this review, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share, and feel free to leave any comments below. Thanks.